Verse 8, Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known the king the interpretation thereof. Now, this is the third time the wise men of Babylon had failed. And the third time, you don't hit the ball, you're out. And I think this put them out of business that night. Verse 9, Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. You can imagine there is in that banquet room where a few moments before they were all laughing and drunk. Now they're sober and perplexed and troubled and puzzled. Verse 10, now through 12, Now the queen, by the reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting house. She's the queen mother. Now she has heard about what's happening at this banquet. And so she comes in. And the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father. Now you understand that relationships were indicated with one word. And this could be father or it could be grandfather or great-grandfather or great-great-great-grandfather. Now, will you notice, she's recommending that Daniel be called. Let me drop down and read the last part of verse 12. Now let Daniel be called, and he'll show the interpretation. The queen mother now comes in to help her grandson out of this predicament that he's in. Well, do you notice what happens now? Daniel's brought in. He'd been set aside I imagine after Nebuchadnezzar, they got rid of him in the sense that he was pushed out of office. 